Thank you, thank you Mr. Speaker. Tanakwe. I rise to take a very short call on the subordinate legislation confirmation and validation bill, which the Green Party will be supporting. Um, as with these sorts of bills from other years, as many speakers have mentioned today already, it just consists of very technical regulations and orders which are extremely uncontroversial. The Regulation Review Committee's correspondence showed that all relevant departments considered it necessary to have the regulations in question confirmed or validated. Um, if confirming these regulations will assist with the proper functioning of departments, then it is definitely most worthwhile to support the bill. So it was no great surprise to see that the Regulation Review Committee recommended it be passed without amendments, and we joined the committee in thanking the relevant departments for their assistance. What was more interesting was the recommendation by the committee that the government examine the viability of introducing bills seeking confirmation and or validation of subordinate legislation earlier in the calendar year um, than has been usual in recent years. So I think this seems like a very sensible recommendation. Um, if we are going to go through this process every year, uh, it is worth allowing the committee to more time to undertake uh, serious scrutiny of the technical issues surrounding the legislation. There seems to be more that can be substantively accomplished through consideration at select committee, at least in the first in instance, than in a first reading debate. Of course, as others have noted, the annual nature of this process is not necessarily desirable. It is good to see a streamlined debate recommended in the case of these confirmation and validation bills, but that does not necessarily mean we are still operating as efficiently as we might otherwise do. Charles Chevelle, in his uh, speech at first reading, made the very good point that this process, undertaken annually, is probably not a very efficient use of the House's time. As he said, it would behove us to try and enact primary legislation that does not require taking time out of the business of the House each year to have bits of it confirmed. Um, if there are major issues with a piece of legislation, we can always deal with that in a more robust way than this yearly exercise <coughs> makes room for. Um, it seems more efficient to delegate more time for re the Reg Review Committee uh, to scrutinize these sort of provisions in the course of their business rather than the slightly onerous procedure which we have now. Um, I, I note that... Um, other speakers have referred to the uh, changes to the road user charges, so part of this bill is um, specifying the rates of road user charges for distance licenses uh, for road user charge vehicles. Um, and um, interestingly, um, government financial statements are out today, and they show that there were significantly lower um, tax take from indirect taxes, and that was primarily because of the road user charges, 73 million lower than forecast. So what this suggests is that actually the government's most recent change to the road user charge regime hasn't uh, delivered the revenue that was expected. Uh, that's in part probably because road use is down. It has been down for five or six years. It hasn't been growing, so there's less revenue coming in from road user charges and from, and from petrol taxes. But it seems in this particular case that the changes that were made to the road user charging scheme um, maybe were very optimistic in terms of the revenue that they would raise. And this is going to pose a significant issue for this government which, of course, has very, very ambitious um, highway building plans, um, which it intends to fund from road user charges and petrol taxes, which, of course, probably aren't going to deliver enough revenue. So now they're looking to um, creative borrowing techniques like public-private partnerships um, and getting us into some really long-term expensive loans to pay for their motorways. So I would expect that next year we may well be seeing um, an update to the Road User Charges Act, um, hopefully increasing the rates of road user charges, because after all of this work that we've just done, um, it does seem that uh, the government hasn't got it right. It's not going to be getting enough revenue in, and it probably should be revisiting its spending priorities, because the spending priorities just don't match up with the demand that's out there um, in the market. And obviously, if you're making investments for the next decade or two, you really want, uh, one would want those investments to be um, supportive of the sorts of economic development 
that we're actually going to see in that time. So um, aside from that, um, I don't have much to add. Uh, this bill raises no major issues of policy for us. Uh, we're happy to see it pass, although I do expect that we're going to have to see an update to the road user charges rates um, in, in a very short time. Um, so I'd like to thank the committee for their careful consideration of the process and extend a particular thanks to Mr. Chauvel, who I think has uh, raised uh, very good points about the process and about the opportunities to improve the process and make it um, a little more streamlined and efficient. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Colin King, it's a pleasure to take it.